extra pieces. You've got them, I've got them, we've all got them, and somehow there's always a huge bin full of them. And sometimes it can be hard to figure out what to do with those extra pieces, especially when every single Lego set comes with at least a few extra pieces. You gotta figure out what to do, and today I'm gonna show you six different builds that you could make starting from really easy to a little bit more complicated so you can use your extra pieces to make something cool. So let's jump into it. Our first build is super easy and won't require any more than 20 pieces. You're gonna need Lego grass pieces all in the same color and at least one that has more than three prongs. You'll still want one that has three prongs, but you'll definitely want this one as the head, the very top of the build. Lego Minecraft and Lego flower sets often come with a ton of these extra flower petals, but only like one or two of a single color. So we're gonna use one of each. The colors I have here are just representations of what you could have, but you're gonna wanna fill the top one completely. While the second one, you don't have to fill anything at all or maybe just a few with the flowers but at the end you can just keep adding as many as you want the goal here is to leave just a few of the leaves open so it looks like a beautiful bouquet and this is perfect to give to a lego bride because the bottom of all the stems can be held by a minifigure it's perfect for a giant bouquet and it's awesome when you have all the colors together you can even use a round one by one brick to put this thing on top and display it too. Build number one, super easy, pretty obvious, but I bet you haven't thought of number two. Build number two is taking inspiration from the giant Lego lighthouse, but this is just a little mini build that you can use all those small pieces for. For this one, you won't need too many pieces, but you're gonna want a four by four plate in blue or at least two four by twos so you can make this entire thing that's going to be the bottom of our ocean to help those blue dots stand out a little bit too the rest of the pieces can be changed depending on how you want to build it but i'm going to be using the dark green and the gray to represent rocks and moss everything else will really be dirt and gravel or part of the lighthouse itself depending on how you want to do it enough said though let's build this thing to build it, we're gonna start with the blue plate and place four of these translucent blue dots on one of the corners. This is gonna be our ocean and our water, looking good. Then we're gonna throw on a brown two by three tile as well as gray tiles on the back. We're gonna use one two by one and one four by two. With that done, we're gonna throw on some of the black pieces to give the brown a little bit of a gravelly look and you can really put anything on here. These pieces I have were just extras from other sets. Even the ones with printing, I think, add a little bit of extra detail that doesn't look out of place or unnecessary. Building the rest of the cliff is super easy, and you can do it however you want. Here, I'm just spacing out the gray and green tiles so it can add a little bit of a mossy look while keeping everything looking organic. Having those smooth one-by-one -one tiles aren't an absolute necessity, but they do help smoothing things out and they make it look really good. In the end, you should have something looking like this. The lighthouse itself isn't super complicated, but we want to make it sturdy by adding bunch of pieces with holes in the middle and we'll stick a bar right through it all and that way this really can't fall over too easily we'll put two more on top and then and finally we'll cap it off with the round piece and everything is completely done in one by one scales so it looks really good and it can just fit right on there in the end you should have something that looks like this with translucent blue on one corner to represent water dirt and gravel on the side and a pathway of moss and stone leading up to the lighthouse itself with that one built though it's time to get the high ground in our next one hopefully it should be pretty obvious what this is but this is of course Anakin and Obi-Wan's final duel on Mustafar. The goal here was to create a few set pieces from the movie itself like the lava and the high ground and that tower we see on top. This is obviously done in super tiny scale but is meant to use as many of those extra little pieces that you might have. This is still a relatively small build so building the thing isn't too hard but it does use a few more pieces than the lighthouse. The base I'm using here is a 4x4 red plate but you can use any color. I just think red or orange probably will look better here. To give it a little bit of more of a base I'm using a 4x2 and a 2x2 brick of orange to represent the lava and that will make the base a little bit thicker than the lighthouse too. You can use any type of combination of orange, yellow, and red to represent the lava, but I'm using 4 orange 1x1 plates four yellow one by one plates and two red one by one plate. The high ground is built up with a little bit of gray, including two gray elbow pieces, a couple of gray one by twos, and this gray one by two with a hook. That's how we're gonna get that tower on the top to connect. So if you don't have that, you can not do the tower, but you will be missing out on that set piece. We'll start off by putting the base of it down with all of the orange bricks down, as well as all of our translucent tiles. I'm doing a three, two, three, two approach here, but you can really do it any way you want but this is where those elbows of the gray will come in nicely when we're done. When you're finished with the lava, you want it to look like this. Then you're gonna grab those elbows and throw them on there with the tiles to add a little bit of depth. Building the thing that Anakin and Obi-Wan stand on that ends up falling into the lava is super easy to build, but one piece that you absolutely need is this piece, the one by one with a little stem coming out of it. If you don't have that, 
this way isn't going to work. You might be able to build it in a different way, but it won't connect without it. Then we're gonna put Technic pins in those three holes right at the center and on the two sides. This could technically be illegal, but having Technic pins, especially extra ones, is really annoying, so I don't care if these break. We're gonna use a lightsaber hilt as the stem of the thing and then connect it to this hook piece that will ultimately connect to the base of it. Once that's done, we're gonna build up the rest of the high ground, which is really easy. You're just gonna to wanna to use gray pieces and you can place them however you want. We can connect the thing to the side and then just build up the high ground to make it go towards that big stem thing on the left side. Anakin and Obi-Wan are brown and black or brown and nougat. So those are the colors I would recommend using for them. And that's our high ground completely done. I know it's in really, really micro scale, so it can be kind of hard to tell what it is, but I think a lot of Star Wars fans will understand it and it's a nifty little thing to have on your desk. But the high ground pales in comparison to Thrawn's Star Destroyer. This is meant to represent Thrawn's Star Destroyer and the mountain that it sits on top of during the events of the Ahsoka show. It wasn't a good show, but it's a cool set piece. This thing requires a bunch more pieces, and these are just the pieces of the mountain itself, but most of these should be fairly easy to find. The masonry bricks, you can replace them for regular 2x1 bricks, but these ones I just had, and they add good texture to the mountain. Feel free to pause the video and count them out yourself so you can build it on your own. The purple 2x2 round brick can be replaced with literally anything, and you'll see when we start the build that there's not really anything that needs to be there. Everything else you'd want to keep it similar colors to help everything look pretty cohesive. To start off we're going to build the base of it using just a bunch of bricks as well as that 2x4 round brick in the middle. This is sturdy enough to hold everything together and gives it a good display piece too. Once we're done with that, we're going to build a few pieces on the bottom to give it a little bit of texture. So we're going to use a round one by one piece and then a bunch of other random pieces that you don't have to use, but those will help out a little bit like the wedge piece and that one by one slope piece. After that, we're really just building up the rest of the mountain, putting these tiles on the bottom to be that garage that we see in the show when what's her face leaves the mountain. I don't even remember her name, but at least this will represent that. Last not brick in the middle, we have a black two by one wedge just to give it a little bit of darkness in there. And this is everything that we've built around that garage. Then we're gonna be putting this plate and this little brick build up here just to connect it to the very top of those studs. That's gonna give us the height of the mountain. The plate and this brick are connected to the snot piece on the inside that allows you to put things on its side. We'll actually need that piece to connect the Star Destroyer later, so this is a necessity. Everything else here, we're just putting up to build around that to make sure that you can't see it from the outside. Building up from that, we're gonna add as much texture as we can, so placing plates on top of plates or using other masonry bricks, even using one by one tiles will help out a ton. After putting on the sides, we're just gonna use a few more bricks to make sure this thing gets all the way to the top. And this is when, before you finish, you want to put on this one by one dot with the bar in it right on that plate. If you don't put that there, the Star Destroyer will not work. With the plates and tiling on top, you're ready to build the Star Destroyer. Now, my Star Destroyer's design isn't perfect and you can alternatively use one that you may have gotten in one of the advent calendars. The Star Destroyer that I've made is a little bit better scaled with this on the back being the engines. These are two snot pieces with a circle in the middle. And then this one is just one two by two brick with another one next to it and a two by four plate connecting them all together. The bottom is just these two wedge pieces connected with a two by four plate too. And then I'm using this to kind of make it more triangular. Connecting them all together is super easy and you'll just put one on top of another with the back obviously being those snot bricks and it just connects like so. I do have a jumper plate that's square in the middle and that is gonna be used to make the bridge itself. The bridge you can use either two plates or one depending on how you feel. I think one or two look good. It kind of just depends on what look you're going for. But if you want a color match, probably one's better. Finally, that gives us this tower from Ahsoka. It's a pretty decent build and I like building the mountain and the Star Destroyer. I think they look really fun and cool. I know the show wasn't awesome, but it's a really great way to use some extra pieces and especially if you have a little bit more gray and if you collect Star Wars a lot, this is perfect. But I think it's time we get a little bit more complicated and celebrate that Lunar New Year. Here comes our Zen Garden. Complete with a lucky, magical spinning house. Zhongguo Xingnian is all about prosperity. But what better way to show that than a beautiful garden with a bunch of pieces from last year's Lunar New Year pack. All of this is to celebrate the Lunar New Year while also making a really awesome display piece that has a few extra features that the other ones don't. So let's talk about how to build it. This frame on the side is optional, but it helps out a lot at creating a frame for the garden and it looks really nice with all the green leaves. You can substitute these leaf pieces for other pieces too. You just wanna make it look full and bushy. So you can use whatever you'd like. With that said, building these is super easy. With the long ones, we're gonna use four on each side. So that way we'll have four leaves covering them up and they cover up pretty well. You'll wanna face them in different directions so they don't cover each other or push each other out of the way. 
way. Building them is not complicated at all, but you'll definitely want to cover as much as you can with these leaves to make it look more authentic and beautiful. With those two out of the way, we've got the smaller ones. Smaller ones are the exact same idea. If you don't have a ton of leaf pieces, but you have some, you can use one by one round bricks too. And the last one, we're gonna just use two leaf pieces and that's gonna be the front of the house. Before starting on the base of the build too, we're gonna use all of these pieces to build the house. House may require some different parts depending on what you're working with. These parts that I have here are all from the Lunar New Year pack, or at least most of them are, which came out last year that was given as a free gift with purchase. To me, these are extra pieces because I never use them and I wanted to find a use for them, and I can now. If you don't have any clear pieces, you don't have to use them, but it will be a little bit complicated later on. You'll just have to connect them at the bottom somehow. So probably try to use them if you can, or you can just cover them up completely. To me the house also looks good without those golden sides but it just adds a little bit of flair so if you don't have those you don't have to use them either. With the house built we can start on the base which is a little bit complicated in some areas but is mostly pretty easy and it's just a giant brick. The pieces that we have on the right side can be substituted for different colors depending on how you want to build this thing. Some of the pieces you won't even see at all so you can use whatever wild color you would like. The red elbow bricks as well as the red 4x1s and 2x1 can be changed to be whatever color you want. Just make sure whatever you use is cohesive with the art style you're going for. If you don't want the thing to spin, you don't need any of the Technic pieces that you see here, but if you want it to spin, you need these exact pieces or something similar or it will not function. That said, let's build you a Zen Garden. The start of the build is super, super easy. We're just going to take this plate here and build a lining around it with one side having a black 2x2 piece. The rest of everything will be bricks. The bricks are gonna be a stack of two each and they need to be this thick in order for the thing to spin. So we're just gonna stack them up one more time and leave that black plate untouched. That done, we're gonna need a type of this assembly. Assembly really isn't that complicated and all you use is just two bricks of one by two with a hole in the middle and then this knob, but you can use anything. You don't have to use something like this, but it's just built in a round knob and it looks nice, but you could use something else to spin it too. This part you absolutely need. It's a little bit of a gear at the very end, as well as this red piece to keep everything in place. Everything goes together really easily and that's gonna be the assembly that you need in order to make this thing spin. So if you don't want it to spin, you can skip this part. That assembly, we're just gonna pop it right in there on top of that black plate you have to have a plate under it in order for it to spin so if it's not black just make sure it's something but we can test it spinning just to make sure and it's working just like it should be the rest of the technic in this requires another gear that looks the exact same as well as this round piece and a stem for us and that's pretty much it just make sure you have that gray piece that keeps it from touching the studs at the very top it won't work if you don't have that but that's our little assembly on that one then we just need to build on top of it and make sure that this connection works so we're going to tile off the top and then go ahead and throw that on there and that on the other side with the round plate on the very top and we test it it works with the spinny done you can put these red bricks on top or whatever you want and then start with the green this is going to be the top of our garden so we've already made it to the top which is awesome there is a hole at the front of the knob don't worry we will end up covering that up with some of our snot pieces we'll then throw those snot pieces on each of the sides they're going to be in the middle of every one of them so we can connect our sides. If you're not going to add the border, you can skip this, but if you don't, it might end up looking like a giant Minecraft block. Testing everything to make sure it looks good, we're going to throw on these 3 by 2 plates here just to make sure everything stays on the same level. I have green 2 by ones here to fill in those gaps, but you can use any color. They won't be seen too much, but I would suggest trying your best to use a color that looks good. The next pieces are a bunch of random ones just to show you that you can really use anything, but we need to have tiles on that second level so the house will be able to spin freely and not catch on anything. And then the front of the house is going to be right there on the opposite side of the knob. The color of the other sides doesn't matter as much, but this side does. After we've got the tiles on there, we can throw the house on that connects to that little stud right at the very top of that Technic pin. And this is it. We can spin now, which is awesome. And it should work pretty well. It might not spin super great, so don't try too hard, but it works well enough to spin it around a little bit. Building the garden is the last step of this. It's super fun to just place all of these pieces, but use as many as you feel like. I'm using these brown flower pieces on the bottom to represent the dirt, but you can use anything. If you're gonna use the bamboo pieces though, you need something that has a hole in it so you can throw everything on. You can design this any way you'd like, but those thicker pieces of the bamboo, you can't place them in certain areas or the house will hit it. The lantern will only fit on the very edge, but you could put it in different places if you wanted to, and everything else just needs to be strategically placed so it will still spin. If you want to make this bigger, you can be a little chill with where you place things, or if it doesn't spin, then you can place garden stuff wherever you want. With the border, you can see just how much better it really looks. So let's finish it up. 
So that's it, our Zen garden complete with a magical spinning house, a bunch of bamboo, and some really great details. This is one of my favorite builds, and it's just super easy, yet it can be complicated if you make it. I would definitely recommend doing this to celebrate the holiday. But alas, what you're all here to see is the coolest, the awesomest mini Geonosis Arena. This build was super fun, yet it's pretty easy, and you could definitely do it. Ever can't figure out what to do with your advent calendar builds, and you have a bunch of extra dots like this? This is the perfect build for you, and it's such a classic scene. Of course, this is just a section of the arena, but it just looks so good, and it's so nostalgic. It's such a great display piece, and it's mini too. To build this thing, you're going to need all of these parts specifically. The plates that I have here, you can use different sizes depending on what you have specifically, but you are going to need something that looks sandy and so I'm gonna use these tan pieces I don't have any Geonosis red so that's gonna be the best option for me but it ultimately looks pretty good you can use whatever color dots you like to represent the characters that you want to see but I've got brown and tan representing Jedi silver for some super battle droids and gold with regular battle droids of course the white are clones and I have one metallic silver for our favorite Jango Fett or at least his head we're gonna start with these two darker tan plates. Again, you can use anything here at the bottom, but we're gonna use lighter tan up on the top with bricks. One side we're gonna build sticking out a little bit so we can connect it to the other, which is gonna be a little bit longer. You can just throw some bricks on here, leave some space for that one, and they're all connected up. For the rest of this, you're just adding the whole battle. I've got that green tile to represent the thing that Obi-Wan fights, or that brown brick at the bottom to represent the thing that Anakin and Padme ride in. This battle, for the most part, is chaotic, so you gotta spread things out and make it look good. If you're done with that, you want it to look like this. We need at least a 3x3 row to fit the arena in the back. These pieces are going to go directly onto the battlefield as markers to help us make sure that everything gets put in the right place, and then we can leave them there when we're done. With that, all of these pieces are going to be the pieces that you need for the arena itself. The gunship is optional, but if you add it, it will look so, so good. So if you have that advent calendar, I would definitely use it. Everything else here is pretty important to have, but you can substitute them for some things. It just might look a little bit different. Those curvy pieces, I know, are a little bit harder to find but they actually help out a lot in creating the shape so let's build it we're gonna start with the half arch and these pieces to get us going we're gonna connect them all together the longer plates aren't quite long enough so one of them will connect in the middle and then the top one will add just a two by two piece to it with the archway and everything we can then throw these two longer pieces on the back you can use other bricks if you want to just make sure you cover that thing up and connect it together once you get those connected together we can put a couple of plates on the very back to make sure that they get up to the exact same level but we want a little bit of curvature here created with these lego pieces once we're done with that we're gonna put on the very top a 4x2 plate with two tiles on top. Now that we've built that we can move this marker piece up to the front and then put this 4x1 brick with holes in it right behind it. These bricks don't have to have holes in them but they really match the kind of aesthetic of Geonosis and they look really nice. Then we're going to put the ones with single holes on the other sides and again this one with three holes is going right in the middle. Once we've placed all of those pieces we can put down our arena right on top of everything. To cover up those large square gaps in the front, we're going to put these 2x1 bricks and they'll also cover up some of the holes which actually gives a nice look. Then we're going to tile it off a little bit to make sure that everything gets a nice smooth feel. From there we're going to connect the gunship with a snot brick, whatever you would like to use, and that will just connect right up to the side of the arena or wherever you'd like it to be. Unfortunately, the build did not come without some scars as Brittle Brown strikes again. This build was honestly super super fun to make and having all those dots around there really brings the chaos of this battle and makes it look awesome in this mini scale lego i absolutely love to be able to put advent calendar builds to use and making it in this setting is just awesome lego really shines with imagination and mini builds are a great way at doing that i think next time i'm going to build mini figure scale builds to know what you guys think and maybe some ideas on how i can do those ones next but there is my take on the awesome geonosis arena battle feel free to pause whenever you're ready and build this thing yourself i'd love to see it if you want to help me out i would love 100 lego dollars or a like and subscribe works too there are plenty of ways you can use your LEGO parts, but these are just some of the ways that I came up with. I'd love to hear what your thoughts on the comments are down below. Tell me which one of these you think is best, and I'd love to see if you try these out, which one you can do even better than me. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please hit that subscribe button down below. We are moving so close to 1,000 right now, and we'll get there pretty soon. Have a great day, and we'll see you next time.